Hi, my name is Lane Compton, and today I'm going to be giving you a book talk on a book called Empty by Suzanne Wayne, uh, published in 2010 by Scholastic Inc. To start us off, I'll just give you a short summary of the book. The biggest idea, main idea behind the book, is about our reliance on non-renewable energy resources and the consequence that our heavy reliance on such has. So it talks about just the extent of our reliance and how many things we that oil and fossil fuels really produce that we might not realize and it talks about consequences um, environmentally such as climate change and global warming and the the disasters that are going to happen in the future if we don't make changes to the to the way that we're living and find renewable energy resources that are less harmful to the earth and can maintain a healthy um, a healthy planet that can support uh, the human race. So it does so through the story of three high schoolers and it talks about how it affects each of them in their lives differently and I think that the author also does a nice job of shedding light on the difference of economic standpoints and how the changes that could happen from our reliance on non-renewable energy resources can affect people differently based on their economic standing. So people of lower economic standing might find that it happen harsh consequences happen to them more quickly compared to people who are well off that can continue to afford, let's say, oil as prices go up when we find that our sources are being depleted. So I think that the author does a nice job of exploring that. And to give you kind of just a short description of the three main characters, it starts with Gwen Jones, who is described as the sort of weird and geeky, kind of mysterious character. And she's the least well-off of the three char main characters. She has a rather difficult home life, and it... It hits her pretty hard, the consequences that occur throughout the book, um, which are many. And she ends up being really crucial in helping the town bounce back and and find ways to help themselves later in the book. So um, as you read, you'll kind of just learn about her misfortunes that come from the lack of gasoline and how she gets through it. And then there's Tom Harris, the boy that lives next door to Gwen, who later in the story, um, they end up becoming, their relationship is important in the book. And the, his character, I thought, was the one that developed the most. They kind of describe him, the author describes him as kind of an unimportant and less developed character in the beginning, but then you see how crucial he is in helping people around the town and getting out there and being proactive in trying to change the way that people are are feeling the consequences. And then there's Nikki Barton. She's described as sort of the popular um, all-American wealthy girl that enjoys a very nice lifestyle and um, her character sort of progresses in the story the least um, but she does become so slightly less self-absorbed as she was in earlier in the book and then just to give you a glimpse of sort of the cons or the changes that occur throughout the book. I'll read a passage that happens earlier in the book as the early stages of their lack of oil and gasoline is affecting their everyday lives. So it's Gwen sitting on her rooftop kind of just making note of this. So the sun had been down for hours. It was no longer blistering hot. From there, she climbed to the peak of the second high roof. Looking down, she saw Sage Valley was completely black. It was a long way off before she could see a patch of lights from some other town once again. Surely all these people hadn't left their bills unpaid. No, this was a blackout. Just below, Tom's yard was so deeply entrenched in darkness that she couldn't see anything. The next second, a flashlight snapped on, throwing a pool of light. Tom stood at the center. 
Then he turned off the flashlight and disappeared. In the intense heat, no breeze stirred. Beads of sweat formed in Gw on Gwen's forehead as she sat below the roof's peak. She had never known such a deep silence. There were no engine sounds, no air conditioners hummed, no TV or music blared. The high, ubiquitous whine of electricity on the wire, that usually buzzed just below the level of consciousness, was missing. Normally cars would have been on the road, but tonight she couldn't hear any pass. Was everyone conserving what gas they had left? So, it gives you just sort of an idea of the way things are changing, and the book gets progresses and the consequences of our reliance on these non-renewable resources and how when it goes away it affects us so heavily gets explored even more deeply throughout the book and even more harsh consequences occur. So to end our book talk I would highly recommend this book not because of its style and its um written content but because it invokes a lot of deeper thought so the main reason is because it gets people to discuss how large of a reliance we have on non-renewable resources around the world and it can perhaps stir change um, in how we see the extent of our actions and second it's written in a really easy to read non-aggressive way which allows the reader to walk through the journey of their potential consequences rather than reading kind of a scientifically written, hard to understand piece of text that may seem like it's pointing fingers at the reader. And then lastly, although written at a very low reading level and the character and plot development isn't there um, very um, sophisticatedly, the, it's still... Um, induces a much-needed discussion about our human footprint, and it allows the reader to do so by reading, uh, it's a, by a quick read, and sort of, um, just invokes much more thought. So, I would recommend this to you, again, Empty, by Suzanne Wayne, and I hope you enjoyed the book talk.